Welcome back my YouTube family. In today's video, we'll be replacing this old dated shower valve and head with a more modern shower valve. I got this off of Amazon for about $70. It came with everything you see here on the screen. The installation was a breeze because I used shark bite connectors and I just screwed those on onto the valve, cut out the old copper pipe and installed the valve. I assure you that you can do this job. So stick around and we'll go through the process. I didn't want to do any ceramic towel repair and I knew that the best method was for me to work on this on the opposite side of the wall. So I just used a hanger, screwed through the wall and that will let me know where I need to cut out my access panel in order to work on this valve. I'm using a stud finder in hopes to cut in between studs so when I get ready to take out the drywall, I'll use that same piece of drywall to put right back into the wall and have wood to screw to. A multi-tool is a great tool to have. It makes fast work of cutting out drywall. Uh, once I did get the drywall out, I knew there was going to be a stud behind there, uh, rather a 2 by 4 that the valve was attached to, but I had to cut out a little bit more drywall in order to get that 2 by 4 out so I could have full access to the back of the valve. I'm using emery cloth here to clean off the copper pipe for two reasons. The first reason is when I use my pipe cutter, I won't run into any type of burrs or anything like that on the, on the copper pipe. And the second reason is that when I go to install my shark bite, it goes on nice and smooth. Now I want to cut my old valve off as close as I possibly can to the valve itself so I can have plenty of pipe left over when I get ready to install the shark bite. Now I'm just going through the process of making sure I get my Teflon tape on the valve real good and just screwing on the shark bite connectors. As you can see, I hand tighten them as much as I possibly could. Then I'm going to use my channel locks to tighten them as much as I can. And then I'm going to come back and actually get them real tight with the pipe wrench. There was also a cap for the bottom. Say for instance, this valve was being used for a tub as well. Then that bottom stem would go to your tub spout. But since it's just a shower, then I'm just capping that off. Although I've already cut the hot and cold supply lines going to the valve, I now need to fine tune exactly where I need to cut all three pipes. The one that's going to the stem for the shower and the cold supply and the hot supply. Rule of thumb is about for half inch copper piping, you want that pipe to go into your shark bite fitting about an inch in. I think it's 0.95, but we just say an inch. Of course you want to cut off your main water supply before you cut your pipes because if not, well. Be careful not to drop your pipe cutter into the wall because that's where the boogeyman lives. But I promise you that is as hard as this project gets. Only thing you have to do now is just take these connectors and just pop them in. I know a lot of people are anti-shark bites and they say, listen, if you're using those, then you're not a real plumber. 
guess what? If you're watching this video, then you're probably not a real plumber, right? You're someone like me that loves to do things themselves, the DIY guy, right? And so what I'm doing is showing you how you can accomplish these jobs as easy as possible without having to pay for a plumber. I've turned back on the supply line and now I'm just getting ready to check to make sure the valve works correctly, uh, making sure there's no leaks in the back of the wall or anywhere that I need to be concerned about. And it also gives me the opportunity now to set the depth of the trim piece. Now, this comes with a template and basically this plastic piece goes on the shower itself but again this is a retrofit so I didn't want to have to cut any ceramic towel or anything like that so I got the proper depth I put a piece of 2x4 behind the wall and then I'm just screwing a valve to that 2x4 and it gives me the correct depth so when I get ready to put all the trim pieces on everything lines up On most shower valves that I installed, this trim piece typically has a couple of screws that you screw through onto the valve itself, but this one just had a rubber kind of like gasket washer and it just fit in place like this. And I guess the way you will hold it in place is the silicone around the whole perimeter. Now that the valve is installed, it's just a matter of changing out the shower head. I could have used a different head that came in the kit, but the one that came in the kit was actually nice, and so I decided to just install that one. I ran out of muscle strength trying to get this arm in place, so I just used a rag and channel locks just to give me a little bit more leverage so I can get it lined up properly. Now it's just a matter of repairing the hole. I'm using the same drywall that I took out and just going through the process of drywall repair. During this bathroom project, I also painted the existing shower enclosure black. So if you're interested in that process, then make sure you check out that video. I also have a complete tutorial on drywall repair. As you can see, there's no evidence of a hole being in this wall previously. And that's what you want. You want drywall repair to look like there was no repair done at all.
I get comments from people all the time saying that I make it look so easy. The truth of the matter is that a lot of this stuff is really easy. You just need to know the steps involved. And once you get the steps involved, then you'll be able to do the projects yourself as well. Listen, I really appreciate you all sticking around for this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload new videos and leave me a comment in the comment section if there's anything that you saw in this video that you need more explanation or anything that you want to see in the future. I'm all for it. Until the next time, eight.